Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and I'm back with more triangles for your viewing pleasure. Now, as you recall, in our first episode, we talked about a couple of things. First of all, that the sum of all the internal angles of a triangle on a plane add up to 180 degrees, no more, no less. We talked about the law of sines. We talked about nomenclature of triangles and we gave you six triangle types to try and solve for. Remember, to solve we need all three angles and all three sides. Now if you have three of the six elements of a triangle, three angles, three sides, you can generally solve for it. And we also learned an exception. On a triangle where we know all three angles, we can't solve for that because there's no way of determining how large the triangle is. We actually need to add at least one side to that group then we can solve for it, but we can't do it with just the angles. We were able to solve for all of these triangles, but we ran into trouble down here. We ran into trouble when we had a side angle side triangle, which meant that we have a side, a side, and the angle in between. And when we had a side 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 triangle with no angles, we can't use the sum to find any angles on that, and we can't use the law of sines we're going to have to come up with something different. So cue on the music and let's learn about the law of cosines. Now to derive the law of cosines, it's going to be something very similar to what we did with the law of sines. We've got our triangle ABC, we've got our sides and our angles marked, and we also have an altitude right here, and we're going to call that H, just like last time. Now as you recall with the law of sines, we just basically looked at the sine of uh, both angle A and angle B and proved that A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Now to find the law of cosines, it's a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and look at something right here. Where the altitude comes down, we're going to call that point D right there. Now, on this triangle, ABC and their corresponding sides are real things. H is not part of all triangles, either is D. So we'll keep that in mind. So we're going to solve for these other things, but when we find that solution, it won't mention H or D. And the other thing that it won't mention is X. And let me show you what X is. Side C of the triangle is this side right here. Now. If we call this x, what's this length right here between d and b? It's c minus x. Now let's go ahead and have a look at this triangle right here. So step one, that's the hypotenuse, right? a squared equals c minus x squared plus h squared. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, let's go ahead and multiply that out. a squared equals c squared minus 2cx plus x squared plus h. Let's remember that one for a few minutes. Now, we have two terms in here that I don't want to have. I've got x's and I've got an H. Let's see if I can get rid of any of those. Okay? Now, let's go over to this triangle right here. That's the hypotenuse, B squared equals X squared plus H squared. Boy, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Now, I notice that I have an H squared over here. I'm thinking that H squared equals B squared minus x squared. That makes sense to everyone? See how I rearranged it? So, let's go up here and get rid of this h. Now 
And instead of adding h squared, let's add b squared minus x squared because we already proved that that equals h squared. Let's go see where we are now. So we have a squared equals c squared minus 2cx plus x squared plus b squared minus x squared. I'm thinking we can get rid of these right here, can't we? We've got plus x squared and minus x squared. We don't need that. So let's rewrite this in a little different order, okay? I'm going to take it down for just a second. But a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2cx. And that was it. And there we go. That's a lot cleaner, isn't it? But I still have this x in here. How am I going to get rid of the x? Well, where is the x in this diagram? It's right here. So chances are it's going to be something to do with that triangle up there. There's also an h on that triangle. I probably don't want to use that, do I? But here's something interesting. Here's an angle a. What's the cosine of angle a? There's my x. Can I solve for that? Sure I can. Now let's go back up here and do the same thing that we did before. And that, my friends, is the law of the cosines. I'm going to give you a moment to go ahead and screenshot that if you want. But then I want to go off and I want to show you how to use this. Okay. All right, let's look at the form of this. So we have a squared. Then it takes the other two sides. And then it subtracts 2 times the other two sides multiplied by the cosine. Of, a, of angle A, which is responsible for that side. Let's look at another one. How about this one? You see the similarity in the form? All right, we're solving for B squared. We're subtracting two times the other sides multiplied by the cosine of the angle responsible for b, and then we have the other two squared. Let's look at c squared. You see the form now? Now let's look at one other way of doing this. Remember with our triangles over here, you know, for example, this one right here, we know all the sides. We can easily solve for those angles with the law of cosines. And then that'll convert it into something that we can use the law of sines or the sum rule for. How about this one over here? We've got two sides and the angle between them. We can solve for c squared. And then, again, we can convert, once we have that, we can use the law of sines to solve for it because we have an opposing angle. You know, over here, all we need is to find one angle and then we've got an opposing side. You know, we've got an angle side pair and we can use the law of cosines for that. So, let's look at another way to do this. Let's go ahead and define it in terms of cosine A. Now here's an interesting thing that you'll notice about this. Now with cosine a, you subtract the square of side a, but the other two sides are still squared. Now we've got one more step in here. 
we've got to take into account that. And again, cosine A is paired with side A. The two odd men out are the ones down here as well. Okay? So, Now, why are these formulas useful? Do you remember when I ended the last episode with, I only wish that we had a way of modifying the Pythagorean theorem to deal with triangles that didn't have a 90 degree angle? That's what it is. That's all it is. It's the Pythagorean theorem with a correction because the sides are changed and the angles change. So we have to put a correcting factor in. And otherwise, this is just the Pythagorean theorem. When a squared is a 90 degree angle, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, and all of this drops out. And we're left with that. So it works with the original Pythagorean theorem as well. But now it works with any triangle and any angle. You can use this for any angle that you want. I hope that was helpful, and now you know far more about triangles than you ever wanted to know about them. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for putting up with me for another episode of Trig on Tuesday, and I'll see you again next week. Take care, guys. Bye, 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 the science guy.